I am Richard L. Boxwell, Jr. L. L. And uh, can you spell it for the audience? Uh, Richard R I C H A R D. L. Period. Mm. Boxwell B O X W E double L. What is your birthday? Six twenty-two thirty-two. born in nineteen thirty-two. Yes, sir. You look, like, you look like a 60 or f even 50s. People will be... I am 84. In, Unbelievable. In two months, I'll be 85. <laughs> you look amazingly young. What is the secret? I've taken care of myself. I, uh, I've had some major operations, but I'm a good, good exerciser. What do you do? I just do calisthenics. I go to the gym. I go to the gym about three to four times a week. And uh, what do you do? Running? I, what do I do? In gym. In the gym, I do uh, arm and leg exercises mainly, and uh, not much of full body. Uh, I try to watch my weight. My weight got up a little high a couple weeks ago, and I've lost 12 pounds. And uh, happy to say that it's uh, hard to do, but I did it. But I just enjoy life. I thought that you are the Korean defense veteran, not the Korean war veteran, because you look too young to me. I was one of the originals. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. It's a great honor to meet you, meet you, the young Korean war veteran. Thank you, sir. Oh. Where I were you born? I was born in Winchester, Virginia. Right here. Uh, graduated from high school. In no, 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 no. You, you're going too fast. Okay. Let me ask questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and tell me about your parents and, and siblings when you were growing up. Uh, I had a mother and a father, of course. I had a sister. Uh, my sister was seven years older than me. Uh, she used to have to babysit a lot, so she didn't like me too much. But uh, we, we were very good, very close. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister died in uh, 1983 of cancer, had lung cancer. Uh, my mother and father were divorced in my senior year of high school. Uh, my mother was a very, very hard worker. She worked in a store, uh, in a clothing store, and uh, she also did a lot of work at home, took in washing. Uh, ironing and all that kind of stuff. My father was an alcoholic. Uh, he worked for People's Drug Store for many, 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 many years. We didn't have any transportation. There was no car in the family or anything, so every place we went, we walked or rode with somebody else. Uh, my sister was a lovely girl, and uh, she had a good marriage. Uh, she raised three boys. Um, my uh, sister died very suddenly of can well not suddenly, she had cancer for a long time and, and uh, she died of cancer in 1983. I had been a big smoker and uh, I saw her smoking on the day that she died in the hospital, which was a sad experience and uh, uh, that was in uh, March and April 1st I quit smoking and I haven't smoked since. So you've been smoking and 84 years old, but you look like a 60-year-old. No, I haven't smoked since 1983. But you smoked until but then. I haven't, yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I have. So I can smoke until. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have people tell me that I look a lot younger than what I am, but uh, there's a secret to it, and that's taking care of your body. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So what school did you graduate, high school? High school, Hanley High School. Could you spell it? H-A-N-D-L-E-Y. D-L-E-Y. Handley. Handley High School, Winchester, Virginia. When? Uh, June 1950. Same, so, same month that the war started. Did you know anything about Korea at the time? No. You didn't know my nation? No. I, I took a business uh, 
subjects in school, and uh, I didn't have much history. Well, I had history, but uh, you know, anything that that I heard about Korea was probably insignificant to me at that time. Uh, I heard a lot about it at the time that I graduated, and the first thing I wanted to do was join the Navy. But the school didn't teach about Korea? No. Not at all? Well, I don't know. I don't know, but it didn't teach me anything about Korea. Any, how about any other country in Asia? Did they teach about China, Japan, oh, right? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. But I can, I, I have to say that I don't remember Korea being mentioned until I read about it in the papers, and of course my parents talked about it, and uh, uh, when I graduated, shortly after I graduated, the, the war started in Korea. So what were you thinking when the Korean War broke out? What well, were you thinking? We, we had had, in our senior year, we had had uh, recruiters come into high school and talk to everybody about joining the services. Uh, Marine Corps, I had some good friends that joined the, the Marine Corps from these recruiters and uh, my uh, thoughts about the Marine Corps were that these guys are going to be out there shooting at each other. And <laughs> I, felt, I felt a responsibility to join the service because I felt that it would mature me. Uh, I was a kid out of high school. I didn't want to go to college, although I was, I was uh, offered a uh, football scholarship by an uncle of mine. And uh, the only thing I wanted to do was join the service uh, since we were at war or whatever, and uh, I wanted to join the Navy. Why so, Navy? Navy, I felt that I would be safer than being on land hand-to-hand -hand battle and all that kind of stuff. When exactly did you join the Navy from where? Uh, joined the Navy from uh, Winchester. Uh, got on a bus, went to Washington, D.C., had a physical. Uh, they turned me down because I had an ingrown toenail. And the doctor said, go home and come back next month. So I went home and I went back in October and I officially went in the Navy in October of uh, 1950. So what did you do about your toenail? Came home, had it fixed. Uh, the Navy didn't want to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I thought it was quite an in inconvenience because I was anxious to go and they put me off at 30 days. So you graduate on the month that the Korean War broke out and when exactly the date that you joined the Navy? I joined the Navy on October 9th. Tell me about the boot camp, basic training. Where did you get it and how was it? Went to boot camp at Great Lakes, uh, Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, boot camp was tough. Uh, we had, uh, we went through everything from KP duty up to calisthenics with rifles on the KP asphalt. duty, what is KP duty? KP duty is peeling potatoes in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, and everybody had Were to do good? that. Were you good? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty good? Yes. Good. Yes, but uh, uh, boot camp is, uh, is a, lot of, uh, a lot of effort in trying to make you feel very, very important, but insignificant. <laughs> they uh, they browbeat you and uh, you know you have uh, inspections and all of this kind of stuff and they just try to put the uh, fear of God in you. Uh, there's an old saying that says uh, there's one way to do things, there's a right way, there's a wrong way, and there's the Navy way and you will do it the Navy way. And. Uh, Boot camp lasted about two months, and it was uh, very, very hard every day. Uh, cleaning up, uh, all kinds of bathroom duties, uh, calisthenics, swimming. Uh, they want to make sure that you can swim since you're going in the Navy. 
and uh, that's pretty easily passed. Uh, you jump in the pool, and if you come up to the surface, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, nobody enjoys boot camp. Uh, that's that's pretty tough. Uh, it's nothing like the Marine Corps that those people go through. But uh, in in Great Lakes, uh, you get one liberty while you're there. You're there about two months, and you get one liberty, and you're able to go into Chicago. And of course, you're too young to drink, so you know you can't go in bars or anything. But uh, I did get my one and only tattoo. There's on a Navy movie. way to do it. Yes. <laughs> I know you have a Navy way to drink. Yes. So, yes. So tell me the truth, okay? All right, so from there, what, what did you do? Where did you go? Uh, when I graduated from Great Lakes, uh, everybody is out on the tarmac and they're making announcements about who is going to go where. Uh, they announced my name and said that I was going to be assigned to the USS Valley Forge. Oh. Aircraft carrier. Really? And there was nine other people, along with myself, that were uh, assigned to the USS Valley Forge. I knew nothing about it. I didn't know what an aircraft carrier was or anything else, but uh, uh, they gave us instructions and orders. I was in charge of the group because my name was the first uh, letter in the alphabet. So I was in charge of these nine guys. Uh, our instructions were to go to Treasure Island, San Francisco, and get aboard the ship at that point. Uh, we went to Treasure Island, the ship was not there, they didn't have any idea when it was going to come in. Uh, this was in December, of course. Um, I was assigned duty in the pool hall, so for three weeks I uh, went over and cleaned and swept the pool hall in the morning and I played pool all afternoon. Uh, at that point, uh, we were told that we we're going to get on a troop transport, go across to Yokosuka. We took that ship. It took us 16 days to get to Yokosuka uh, to go aboard the Valley Forge, but the Valley Forge never showed up. So they put us on a train and sent us down to Sasebo and said we would go aboard the ship from there, and the ship never showed up after a week. So they said, uh, we have a, uh, a refueling tanker that's going out to refuel the fleet. So they put us on the tanker, uh, took us out to sea. Valley Forge was operating off the coast, of course. Where? Off the coast of Korea. And uh, we uh, went aboard by High Line. We pull First of all, we pulled up along the USS Val uh, Missouri which is a battle wagon. Yeah. Uh, being a country boy from Winchester, Virginia, it's the biggest uh, <laughs> thing to see and understand that it can float and all that kind of stuff. We went from there to the Valley Forge and I went across to, Val to the Valley Forge by High Line with waves kicking up on your feet. Uh, when I went aboard. So, okay. when was it? When you get into the Valley Forge eventually, okay, through so many different, you were in Yukosuka, Sasebo, they didn't appear, so you took the, the oil tank, and then USS Missouri, and then Hotline. When was it that you landed at Valley Forge? Two months after I left boot camp. So? First of February. First of February of 1951. 1951, yes. The reason that I am asking, I am very, in, very interested in about this, that you are in the Valley Forge, because I did interview U.S. pilot, Navy pilot, that he took from the Valley Forge and bombed the Pyongyang in July 4th of 1950. He was in Valley Forge around the Philippine area when the Korean War broke out. They came to the West Sea 
and they bombed Pyongyang. And I know this guy. Okay. William Gordney. Okay. And his son was the commander of North Com uh, the U.S. Navy Admiral. Okay. So I put them together. I will show you that interview to you. But you are in the same aircraft carrier. Yes. And wow. And uh, the aircraft carrier Valley Forge was at Subic, Subic Bay in the Philippines. Yep. It was the only carrier in that area anywhere, and it was called into Korean duty. Yes. It was the first carrier. I know. To operate in Korea. And I was not on it at that time. I didn't go aboard until February of 1951. Yeah. That's right. Yes. What amazing coincidence. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. So glad to meet you, so be able to you. talk to you about this Valley thank Forge. You. And when you landed in Valley Forge through the hotline, what were you thinking? Why am I here? Is it kind of, am I going to fight here or something like that? Tell me about it. Yes, that was, that was all in my mind. I was uh, like, I always call myself a kid from the country, Winchester, Virginia. And I'm in a, I'd never been more than 100 miles away from home. Here I was clear across the world. I was in a war that I didn't know that much about. I was going aboard ship that would be greatly involved in the war, and I had a lot of thoughts about what's going to happen to me. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, first of all, I was assigned duty to the catapult crew. Catapult? Yep. And I spent a year or a year and a half, I guess, up, up topside hooking up airplanes. Uh, I was on general quarters. Uh, we were on general quarters 24-7. We were always on call to launch aircraft. Uh, we had Sky Raiders, we had AD-4s, we had Corsairs, we had some F-9F jets aboard ship. And uh, I hooked up the airplanes. There, of course, I was in a crew that hooked up the airplanes. Valley Forge has two catapults did have two catapults. It's sunk now. It's been used for razor blades. But uh, I was in a catapult crew and I was uh, worked on the port catapult, catapult hooking up planes. And of course the uh, division officer would give the signal to somebody on the edge of the deck who would hit a button. Light would come on down below in the engine room. They would hit a button and the plane would take off. Next one would come up, I'd hook it up. And I went through this, uh, like I say, for about a year and a half. Uh, in the process, I was run over by an F-9 jet. Uh, I've got a right ankle that's never been right since then. And uh, I was run over by the jet. I was in sick bay for nine days. What? Ran over by jet? Yeah. How did it happen? Well, I slipped on oil, on an oil spill and my leg went out from underneath of me while the jet was approaching the catapult and uh, ran over my right ankle and then, of course I was screaming and hollering but nobody could hear me, too much noise. Uh, and uh, they picked me up, took me to sick bay. I was in sick bay nine days, they did. What do you mean sick bay? Uh, like a hospital. Inside of the car in, inside carrier. Inside the carrier. Yeah. And uh, nobody would believe me that uh, I didn't hurt. <laughs> the, uh, the carrier deck was wooden and there was a lot of splinters in my leg. And uh, they put me in sick bay, they took care of the splinters, bruising and everything. After nine days, the doctor came over and he said, uh, Boxwell, how do you feel? I said, I feel good. He said, walk over to that wall and come back, which I did and he said, go back to duty. That's it. That was, that was it. Now, today, from that accident, my all the ligaments and everything are torn up. So show me that part. Where? Point it, please. Right there? Right there. Uh-huh. And is it okay now? No. No. no it hurts. 
<laughs> it's always How? it's always hurt me. How? Tell uh, me the symptoms. Just pain, just pain from walking, and uh, I uh, I had it examined by uh, Veterans Administration, and I do have some disability. Mm -hmm. I have disability for my hearing. Uh, we had no hearing aids aboard ship, no hearing plugs. What about, so tell me about the catapult system at the time. Now that we have a modern, right? Right. So how did it work actually? The catapult system then was hydraulic. Uh, we had two engine rooms down below, one operating each catapult. In the operating rooms, there were four hydraulic pumps. Mm -hmm. uh, those pumps were huge, uh, probably somewhere around uh, half as big as that desk. And they were round and they had uh, two or three hundred pistons inside of them. Uh, there was four of those, I think, on each catapult, and everything was run by cables. There was cables from the catapult room uh, going through the, the area of the ship and up to the top uh, flight deck where the cables were hooked up to a little shuttle that, uh, that was the catapult. So must be very dangerous, right? Well, it was. I saw a man lose his arm. Arm? Yeah. Because of the the the, the belt, right? Well, the the the, the uh, cables were around these cables. big big shivs. They call them big metal shivs, and the shivs had liners on them that the cable ran on. Uh, one time we had a uh, k. Uh, shiv that threw its liner, mm -hmm. it had to be replaced, and I stood there helping two or three fellows take it out, and we put a new one in, and one of the men that was close, he looked through the shiv, it had holes in it that you could see through the, he looked through the shiv and saw a oily rag on the other side. He reached in, to uh, get the rag about that time, they took up tension on the uh, cable. The, sh the shift spinned about a half a turn and tore his arm off right up to the shoulder. And that's, that, was the fir that was the only battle problem that I ever experienced mm -hmm. uh, aboard this carrier because we never got close enough, you know. But, did you get the Purple Heart for that? No. Why not? Well, they didn't call it a, uh, a war injury. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what they called it. Uh, it's a power of war injury because you were well, in the war. It, it, I, was, I was at war. I was injured in the war. And I thought I should get one, but I, I questioned it a couple times and Nobody gave me any satisfaction, so I dropped it. That's not fair. No, no. I do, I do have some disability. I got some disability for my hearing. Uh, I also got some disability for my ankle. Uh, I, I don't think it was fair, but I got 30% for my hearing and 10% for my ankle. And. Uh, uh, I get free hearing aids that help me hear, but uh, my ankle's just, it's bothered me all these years and I've, uh, I've had a lot of orthopedic work done, joints replaced, and I asked my doctor one time to take an x-ray of it and let me know what she thought, and she looked at it, she said it's a mess. So. You, you should claim this to the Navy. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I went to the Navy. I mean, I, I, I had somebody that helped me fill out the papers and everything. Gee, that's uh, not fair. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry. But 
I, I have a job where I'm on my feet quite a bit. I work, I work part time still. So what was your rank at the time? My rank was uh, aviation, bosun's mate, second class. Aviation? Bosun's mate. Boatsons, B-O-A-T. <laughs> Boatsons? Yeah. B-O-A-T-S-E-N? Uh, with a S on the end of it. Something made, like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. made second class? Yes. And what does that mean in, in terms of Army, the rank? What is it? Uh, probably corporal? something like a corporal, yeah. Are you sure? Mm, I think so, yeah. How much were you paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> they need to, te teachers and students wants to know. It, it's, been, uh, it's been 67 years ago, and I don't even know what. $100? Is uh, that too much? Th that would have been too much. Yeah. Eighty dollars? Fifty to seventy five probably. Yeah. Let's say seventy five dollars a month. Yeah. How was life inside of the carrier? I mean you are the country boy from Winchester mm -hmm. and you are in the middle of ocean and it's so huge, big ship. Yes. Tell me about the life there. Well, the life was good. Uh, we, uh, uh, we had a lot of people aboard ship. Uh, an aircraft carrier carries about three to three and a half thousand people normally. How many? Three to three and a half thousand. Uh, when, the, when the air groups come aboard, that goes up by about a thousand and a half. So, you know, total uh, 5,000 men aboard ship. Of course, we didn't have ladies back then. Mm -hmm. uh, people were, people got bored uh, being out. We were out at times for five, six months out in the ocean. And uh, we'd go back in periodically to Japan to uh, pick up provisions, uh, pick up some more airplanes if we needed them. And, and uh, then go back out, and there, the Valley Forge actually did uh, three combat missions, did four combat missions to uh, Korea. Uh, I went aboard in the second mission, and I was there for the second, third, and fourth aboard ship. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, Why? Well, it, it was. It was people that, that I really got along good with, you, you know, you, with people from all over the United States. Uh, we had some good guys, we had some bad guys. Uh, we had guys that liked to fight, they liked to pick fights and for exercise and something to do. And, and I got into one of those once and that was all for me. I'd, I could find better ways to entertain myself. Uh, but. Uh, the guys were good. I had some real, real good friends aboard ship, and and even today I think about some of them and wonder if they're as lucky as I have been to still be alive. And and uh, I don't have any real contact information for any of them, but you know I've often thought about uh, my comrades. Uh, How about food and entertaining or? other aspect of your life? Food was good. Uh, food was interesting because we always got to go to the front of the line. Uh, we, were, we were at general quarters all the time and we never stood in line for anything. Uh, we got to go first. We always got booze and everything. Uh, everybody aboard ship is identified by colors. Uh, T-shirts. And uh, when the green T-shirts of the catapult guys came up to jump in front of the line, that was, hell was raised. <laughs> Privileged class. Yes, yes. But... Uh, alcohol? Drinking? Allowed? No drinking. No alcohol? Did you say alcohol? Yeah. No. Really? No. Now, now the ship had, the ship had a couple big rooms down in the bottom where they carried beer. Yeah, beer is alcohol. Beer is yeah. alcohol, but 
uh, it was restricted. You don't use it aboard ship. Uh, if you had a division, there was many divisions aboard ship with many men in them, and sometimes the divisions, when they knew we were going into Japan or something like that and going to be there a few days, they would schedule division parties. At that point, uh, they could ration beer from the ship and take it ashore for their oh. party, but uh, never, never any alcohol available aboard ship. Not even officers? Officers, yeah. They did? Yeah. That's not fair. Yeah. Right? No. Do you agree with me? Sure. Uh, the, so I bet the, that you the, guys complained a lot, right? Well, the, 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 the thing is that you have to realize uh, the catapult engine rooms were in officer's country. That's where all the pilots are. That's where all the pilots are staying. Uh, every night they were playing cards, they were drinking, and uh, they had a reason for it because they were doing something very, very serious and they didn't know if they would take off tomorrow and die and die and uh, my father was pilot so I know was that. he okay yeah. so that was allowed that was allowed aboard ship uh, it was noisy at times and uh, they I mean they were partying and uh, they they had some pilots that were uh, were really, really hyped up with this thing. I mean, they just loved what they were doing, but they realized in their mind that one day they may not uh, come back to the ship. One of them was William Gordney. He was captain, mm -hmm. and I did an interview, and his son became the admiral. He, so he was in charge of Norfolk Fleet Forces, U.S. Fleet wow. Forces in Norfolk, yeah. Virginia. and. Yeah. That was lucky. Yeah. So, so you never landed in Korea, right? Never landed in Korea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when were you discharged? Discharged uh, July 20, uh, let's see, July 22nd was the end of the war in 19, I was discharged in 1954. The war ended in 1953. Yeah, but when were you discharged? I was discharged in July 27th. Uh -huh. 1954. Oh. At Norfolk. So tell me about the Korea. You did. You told me that you didn't have any idea Korea was, where it was, and you didn't land it in Korea, and you know that the Korean War completely destroyed the Korea. Mm -hmm. And you saw the pictures, right? Yes. Have you been back? Have you been to Korea? No, I haven't. And Do you know? What Korea is now, right? I know what it is. Economy, democracy, and technology. South, and South Korea has one of the biggest economies in the world. And uh, they're sitting there uh, with this idiot up north, not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, he, could, he could blow Seoul off the map if he wanted to. And uh, everything that's happening now is... is uh, very interesting. I, I keep, I, I have a joke that, you know, if there's another Korean War, I'm going to join up and see if they'll take me. I will <laughs> let you because you look too young. <laughs> but, so from country boy of Winchester, Virginia, middle in the ocean, participated in the war, you know the Korea in 1950 and now Korea. What is it? Why were you there? What is the legacy of your service? And what is Korea to you? Well, I learned a lot about Korea from the war because uh, uh, I've, I've got some friends that, that uh, were in the Army, et cetera. Uh, we have the KWBA chapter here in Winchester, which is very big. Uh, Korea back then was uh, uh, somebody that was hooked up with the, up north, North Korea, they were hooked up with the Chinese. And uh, I have a good friend in our chapter that uh, tells a story once in a while. He said, when the war broke out, I was in the army in Japan, and they transferred me to Korea 
and I joined the Chinese army seven days later. He was captured, hmm. and he spent 35 months in a, a POW camp, and uh, still living, still living and kicking. Nice guy. Here? Yes. I think I did an interview him. What's his Ed name? Ed Real. Ed Real, yeah. Yeah, Ed Real. He's, he's a good guy. He, yeah, I, he's, got, I did. He, he's got a lot of problems, but he's a good guy. Right here, I did interview him. Uh huh. Several but, years ago. Yeah. But uh, y you know, there, there's so much going on in the world now with with uh, with Korea and China and and uh, you know, people uh, tell me, and I believe it, that if this guy in Korea launches missiles in the wrong direction or whatever that they're going to they're going to level North Korea and I imagine they can uh, but it's a horrible thing to think about really and I keep hoping that some guy will come along with a rifle from a mile away and you know put a bullet in his head and get rid of him and uh, I, I can't understand why it hasn't happened, or possibly people have tried, you know, but uh, I, I, I think Korea is a, I, I fell in love with Japan. I was, I was in Japan uh, when I first went across, and uh, I was still in the occupational forces. They, you know, they were still making changes and everything. I met a lot of nice Japanese. I, I just loved the Japanese. And, and I, I love the Japanese Southern uh, Korean people that I've met. I've been fortunate to go to Washington to some functions down there and, and communicate with some of these people. Uh, we have a Korean church outside of Winchester. They invite us once a year around Thanksgiving to come to a church service and uh, they feed us, they give us a church sermon and uh, give us gifts and everything, and they're they're great, great, great people. Uh, they love us, and we love them. And uh, I've thought about going back to Korea. Uh, I think it'd be very, very interesting. But in, in the back of my mind, I keep thinking that I was never ashore in Korea, and I don't know what it used to look like. I don't know anything about what it was. And you can go to a lot of big cities and, and uh, see the growth and everything, but uh, you have nothing to compare it with. And that would be my thoughts about me going back to Korea. Uh, they say it's a wonderful trip, it, you know, it's paid for, the, uh, you know, you got, got these people that really love you and bow to you. and. That embarrasses me sometimes. I don't, I don't think I'm that great. Do you want me to address that, your issue there? Sure. First of all, you are Korean War veteran. You mm -hmm. fought during the war, especially in the Valley Forge, which was the only aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. That aircraft carrier did really, really important job, and you deserve to go, okay, Korea. Yes. As a Korean War veteran, we Korean government running revisit program. You should go. Second, you you didn't land the Korea so that you didn't know what looked like at the time. But we have a plenty of pictures, yeah. especially in my foundation's website. Mm -hmm. So you don't you didn't have to be in there to know what Korea looked like. Okay. There are a lot of pictures from my website, so please check it. You do internet? Uh, I call myself an internet illiterate. I want you a little to be, bit. A little bit. I want you to be internet literate from okay. now on. Okay. Check this website. You can see so many pictures. And so that there is a basis you can compare to the modern Korea okay. when you go. I want you to go, okay? Okay. And feel proud about your service. If I went, uh, I would want to take my wife, and my wife, wife can't travel. She's got back problems, and then you got to go yourself. Yeah. As a single bachelor. Well, <laughs> we we we've been married for 62 years, 
and uh, had a lovely time. Got a lot of kids, a lot of grandkids, great grandkids, and we're always doing things together. And, but uh, just uh, ten days, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'll give it some thought. <laughs> yes, please. I will. I strongly urge you to go and see what you did for Korea. Okay. And how Korean people reconstructed their own nation. Mm -hmm. Strong, beautiful. Okay. Yes. I don't want to sound like a President Truman. I mean the Trump, but it's a good country. Your hair is the wrong color. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is there any other things that you want to say about your service there? I mean, in addition to catap catapult, I mean, were there any other dangerous moments during your service or anything that you want to share with us? Well, we, we, had, we had a situation uh, when we launched 30 or 40 planes. We didn't know how many were going to come back. Uh, we had a lot of them that would come back. They'd have. Uh, bombs that didn't release, they'd have rockets that didn't release. Uh, this was our excitement in the war. Now, it, it sounds, sounds corny, really, but uh, if a plane hit the deck and a bomb released and went stumbling up the uh, flight deck, it kind of scared you, but, but uh, we had guys that were dying for excitement, and, and this was excitement for them. Uh, and the ordnance crew would run out and pick up the bomb and disarm it real quick and throw it over the side of the ship. Uh, sometimes it would always go, go off when it hit the water, but uh, well, we had plane crashes that came in. Uh, we were assigned uh, farming duties uh, to different uh, areas and everything. I was, a, I was on a nozzle of a hose and one time we had a jet that came in and, and crashed into a gun tub which had live ammunition in it, uh, caught on fire and my hose was the first one to get there and everybody behind me was pushing me to get closer and closer and closer and I thought I was going to die right there. I just knew that thing was going to blow up. I was on the nozzle. And, and I thought sure that that was my last day. And it scared me, really, really scared me. But uh, we got the fire out and nothing, nothing exploded, nothing went off. But uh, we had a lot of things like that, uh, airplanes crashing on the deck and uh, ordinances uh, getting loose from the planes. They'd, they'd hit whatever kind of button they got to drop it that wouldn't drop for some reason and uh, they would call ahead and say I'm, I'm landing with hung ordnance uh, which meant they had a bomb or a rocket or something and uh, we had uh, when when we were landing airplanes we always uh, took the planes that landed and put them up on forward on the flight deck and sometimes you'd have a uh, plane that would come in that would miss the cable that it, they're supposed to catch and go all the way up the deck and hit three or four more planes and uh, lots of stuff like that going on during operations and a uh, situation where you couldn't allow it to put you out of commission. You had to hurry up, clear it away, uh, throwing planes over the side of the ship and everything to uh, clear the deck for the next guy that's coming in to land. Normally they're coming back with very, very little fuel. Uh, they know how much fuel they had, they know how to use it, uh, whatever the miles are or, or whatever, they uh, would come back with low fuel. Uh, sometimes uh, they wouldn't make the ship, they would uh, land behind the ship instead of making it all the way to the flight deck. So we did have some excitement. Uh, we, we didn't have people shooting at us. Uh, we had uh, several occasions where they sounded general quarters and said uh, enemy aircraft heading to the fleet. And uh, of course that got everybody worked up, you know, and then they would sound all clear and, you know, planes turned back. And, but uh, never in any real action or battles. Uh, 
we were far enough out that at night we could see the bombs bursting in the air and and all that kind of stuff and that's how it's supposed to be. You're in the middle of ocean and yes. no enemies except the enemy aircraft carrier could have access to your location and that's how it's supposed to be. And, but you had enough, you call excitement, but dangerous moments there yeah. and people dying, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What an amazing service. Huh? We lost, uh, I'll, I'll never forget, I think it was either the uh, second or third uh, crews that the ship had. We lost uh, 20 some pilots on that uh, cruise, which amounted to, you know, five, six, seven months or whatever. Lost most of our airplanes, uh, really had a bad time. And uh, you, uh, you, you feel bad for all those guys that didn't come back. It is my great pleasure and honor to meet you, and thank you for your service, especially in the Valley Forge mm -hmm. aircraft carrier. And I want you to know that Korean people never forget what you did. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you.